Hello and welcome to a special edition of Natural Adventures featuring a tour of our biostation campus. Let's go. So first a little background. The biological station is located just north of the 45th parallel, about 20 minutes below the Mackinac Bridge. And we are a field research station. We've been here since 1909, and our scientists study terrestrial, aquatic, and atmospheric ecology in all its forms. We also host undergraduate classes. Looking down faculty row here, I'll talk a little bit about the community at the station. It's not just students. We host researchers from all over the world, graduate students who are doing their work, and families. So often in the summer, there are kids running around. There are all kinds of fun activities going on. The station is located in what's known as South Fishtail Bay of Douglas Lake. The whole lake is shaped like a goldfish. Here we're looking at Grapevine Point, then panning north across the lake, and to the east, Pine Point. These are popular walking, hiking trails, running trails, biking, and the public are also welcome to use our trails here at the station. With over 3,700 acres of surface area, Douglas Lake is the 28th largest lake in Michigan. And it's a kettle lake, which means after the last glaciers retreated, a scattering of huge ice chunks formed the lake's seven distinct basins or kettles. So here on shore, it's pretty shallow, but you go out 10, 15 feet or so, there's an 80 foot drop from one of those kettles. Okay, let's mosey on back to the main gate. And students, I'll show you the part of camp where you'll be spending most of your time. The main road in camp is called State Street. It's like a little taste of Ann Arbor here at the biological station. This is the dorm. Typically students don't stay here in the spring or summer, but often we host researchers, short-term researchers who stay there. And then this is the dorm lounge. And students do often use this part of camp to study, hang out, play games, a lot of good times. These cabins here are typically staff or researcher cabins. And these right past the dorm lounge are guest cabins. And then back behind there is the laundry room. And this is the lecture hall, home of the all camp orientation, our endowed summer lecture series, movie nights, talent shows, the bastion of intellectual exploration. Here's the health service cabin. Usually we have a nurse in camp and you can get all your first aid needs taken care of here. At the heart of camp is the Chatterbox. Popular student hangout, good place to study, gets good Wi-Fi. And at night, there are some pretty string lights aglow. I will say most of camp gets pretty decent Wi-Fi. Sometimes it's a little spotty in some of the tin cabins interference, you know. Just past the lecture hall on the left, we have the dining hall. It's on the second floor of this big administrative building. And then the ever popular volleyball court, both a meeting spot and a place for very intense head-to-head -head matchups between volleyball teams, classes, researchers, staff, etc. We also have an annual square dance that takes place on this quadrilateral lithoplane beneath the dining hall the administrative building, the summer office. Come say hi to us. There are bathrooms up here. The mail room is up here. And the camp store for all of your basic needs and UMBS apparel. This is the library where students spend many a late night studying. Isn't that right, Shane? We're not all work, no play around here. We've got a basketball court. You can see a swim platform out there and some canoes that students or whoever 
are welcome to take out as long as you sign a waiver in the office. You can hit the high seas of Douglas Lake. This is our piping plover hatching and rearing facility. We have a thriving partnership with the University of Minnesota and the Detroit Zoo to try to help preserve this endangered shorebird. I'll come back around and show you this part of camp. But for now, we're gonna go up one more level and I'll show you a few student classrooms. These are all classrooms. That's Hungerford. This is Welch. And this is Houghton Lab, off in the insects class, occupies this lab. And actually, fun fact, this building, years ago, years and years ago, was dragged up on logs by horses from the main level of camp. Pretty crazy. Another class space, East and West Sparrow. And this is student land. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. I've made the executive decision to circle back to those student cabins after we venture up the Airy Mountain to Hilltop. Up above the main part of campus, we have Hilltop housing. So a couple of options here. Generally, slightly more refined than the more rustic student cabins below. Also up on the hill is the UMBS Camp Garden. This summer, because of the COVID situation, it's a little bit overgrown, but typically each summer we have a gardener who cares for and grows all kinds of yummy produce for us to eat in the dining hall. As per tradition, let's go ahead and sample a raspberry here. Mmm, it's really good. Just past the garden, we have a relatively new but much beloved building here on campus, the Straw Bale House. This was built by students in 2017. They did everything. They mixed the mud, they put up the beams, reclaimed lumber from the U of M campus, and this is the beautiful result. Now it's used as a classroom and sometimes a space for music or poetry readings, all kinds of good stuff. Anyway, let's keep going. This is one of my personal favorite spots on camp. Kind of an unsung treasure. The lookout tower. And from the top of this structure, you can get a pretty good view of camp and of South Fishtail Bay. This is a nice place to take it all in, take a little quiet time to yourself, maybe escape your delightful but noisy roommates. Maybe stop and read for a little while. Don't spread it around, but sometimes there's some quite touching graffiti up here. Do you hear that bird call? Sounds to me like a hermit thrush. I love that sound. It's like the color blue or glass breaking very far away. I'm waxing a little poetic here, but something about this place makes you feel that way. This is the far west end of student housing, historically called Manville, which I know is strange, but in the old days of UMBS, only the men lived up here. But now, of course, it's equal opportunity. And then here's another classroom. This is Court Lab. Most recently, the weird and wonderful algae class has been occupying this space. Brats, it's locked. But they've got some very fancy microscopes through which they see into the window of our diatom compatriots. And right above Court Lab is another important UMBS landmark. This is the trailhead for the Grapevine Point Trail. It's absolutely beautiful. And lucky for you, we have a pretty good trail map here. 
What do you say? Should we investigate a student cabin? Granted, nobody's been living here this summer, so it won't be all outfitted. But you can see the ever popular door art. Tree of Trust. And through the screen door. It's, just, it's a little dark, but this is a student cabin. Featuring graffiti from all time. And these cabins in air quotes, Manville, are right up against the back of Lakeside Lab. Here is one of the women's bathrooms. It is a communal bathroom. We're not going to go in, so you'll just have to use your imagination. But it's perfectly functional. Here's one of many staircases that will bring us back to UMBS sea level. Or rather, lake level. But right now we have some researchers doing work at Lakeside Lab. It's otherwise closed, except for essential researchers such as... Chris Vogel! There he is, wearing a mask like the good citizen that he is. Chris works out at the Ameriflux Tower on our property. Now we're headed east again, and we're in Blissville. Again, this name is a relic of UMBS past. Married couples used to live in this housing. Take that as you will. Now, typically teaching assistants live here, or researchers and graduate students. Lakefront property. We're really just scratching the surface here. There's so much more to explore here at the University of Michigan Biological Station. We hope that you'll join us in person one of these summers, and you'll just have to see it for yourself. But for now, this concludes our tour. Thanks for joining, and may the road lead you to Douglas Lake.